Two years ago, I named Project Demigod as the best Spider-Man VR game for its achievements in Spider-Man VR combat and web swinging. But around August last year, I received an email and about 30 billion comments about a game called Battle Glide. When I played it for the first time back then, it was comparatively simple. But now, a year later, the game offers something I've never seen before in this subgenre. So is Battle Glide truly the best Spider-Man VR game, or is it simply the latest in a long line of challenges? This is the hunt for the best Spider-Man VR game. Battle Glide is an open-world sandbox game that immediately calls to mind games like Superfly and current title holder Project Demigod. But with a closer look, you'll find something completely different going on behind these skyscrapers, something that I think genuinely poses a threat to Demigod's best game status, even after its official release on the Quest Store. But what is it that earns Battle Glide this flattery? Well, if you've seen my Spider-Man VR Hunt series, you'll know that I rank Spider-Man VR games based on three main pillars. Web swinging, and movement in general, combat, and finally, how the game replicates the Spider-Man fantasy overall. Suffice to say, Battle Glide thrashes in all of these departments, but like Project Demigod in the state I reviewed it two years ago, there is certainly room for improvement. Let's start with the web swinging and movement. In the final episode of The Hunt, I coined something called the Golden Standard for VR web swinging. The standard consists of pendulum physics by default, allowing your swings to arc. Then, upon an input, the webs can be retracted like a grapple. And as we discussed, this system is the most character accurate for Spider-Man. Unfortunately, Battle Glide doesn't have this feature, but on the positive side, it does have an array of settings you can use to mold the swinging experience to your individual playstyle. In the settings menu, we can enable acrobatics, a once rare feature in Spider-Man VR games that now seems ubiquitous. There are variables for how fast you flip and how the game decides which direction you flip in upon pressing the jump button mid-air. I kept these on medium and thumbstick mode respectively. I found that the latter option offered more control than the velocity-based setting. Now for the settings that impact web swinging, starting with Swing Height Assist, which prevents you from hitting the ground during the arc of your swing. Turn this off for an extra challenge. Rope Elasticity doesn't really impact the skill required of the swinging, but it does change the physics slightly, with each increment making them bouncier. This is great for some people, but I prefer my webs taut. Finally, Swing Aim Assist changes the ferocity with which your web crosshairs lock onto the environment and enemies. I actually kept this on, albeit at the lowest setting, simply because it adds a level of effortlessness that feels natural for a super-powered hero like Spider-Man. Turning it off would increase the margin for human error, and I play these games to forget that I'm a pile of mush piloting a meat suit, not to be reminded. One thing that is different to other games in this genre, but that can't be altered by the player, is the strength of the web zips. I've discussed before how a delicate balance needs to be struck regarding how strong these are, and Battle Glide walks that line perfectly. They're strong enough to move you in a direction, but not so much that you might as well not even swing. With that being said though, gaining momentum from standing still on street level can be a bit of a pain. If we scale a building using the wall crawling, which is good but not as good as Demigod's innovative wall running, jumping off gives us enough momentum to start swinging, but you don't always want to do this. That's why I propose introducing the Web Slingshot, which is a move common in Spider-Man's flat games, but one we've never seen in VR before. This will be a perfect fix that doesn't change the balancing of the web zips, and it's just bloody fun. Now, this is going to sound kind of dumb, but if we have a look at the game's title and then the gameplay itself, there's a little bit of... dissonance. The game is called Battle Glide, but yet we don't have web wings. I feel like the physics system in place is almost begging for a robust, skillful gliding system. Not something like Zenith, rest in peace, or Population 1, where you just stick your arms out like an idiot and the game does everything for you. I'd love to master this mechanic just like the swinging, and threading the needle between these buildings would be awesome, in VR especially. Now, while Battle Glide might be lacking on the glide front, it's certainly not on the battle one. In fact, it's the only combat system that even remotely encroaches on Demigod's territory, despite one glaring flaw. But first, this new web zip to enemy feature comes in two varieties. The first is a one-handed zip, where you fling yourself towards the enemy. The second is a two-handed zip, and with this, the enemy comes flying towards you. Right before you collide though, the slow motion spider sense automatically kicks in, and this is where you can pull off some sick moves. One of my favorites is this face grab to body slap. It never gets old. Also, the slow motion feature, a staple of Spider-Man VR games, is available from a button press outside of this scenario as well, alongside a powers menu that, if I'm being honest, feels a little undercooked. 
the only one that really feels like something Spider-Man would use, outside of the slow motion and super punches, are these taser webs, which got old fairly quickly. Speaking of things Spider-Man wouldn't use, Battle Glide also has a range of firearms and melee weapons for you to access in combat. I won't complain too much about this though, partially because without them we probably have a lawsuit on our hands, and partially because it's genuinely fun to disarm an enemy and shoot them with their own weapon. Or the police. But we'll get to that later. Additionally, since Battle Glide is physics based, you can use these also as regular props, meaning you can throw them at your enemies as a part of combat. Webbing some other props, like these pallets or barrels, will even put you into this never before seen floating state, where you can aim and fling them at your foes. This is crazy in its current form, but truthfully a little bit overpowered, so here's how I would change it. Firstly, I would replace the floating state with a slow motion jump, meaning your time in the air is limited. Right now you can just kind of float there for however long you want, with no detriment to you whatsoever. In a physics based game like this, I feel like that's a little bit immersion breaking. Before I mentioned that Battle Glide's combat has one glaring flaw, and it's a rather simple one, but without it you lose a core facet of the Spider-Man experience. Battle Glide just doesn't have hand-to-hand -hand combat. This is a field that Project Demigod absolutely shines in. My favourite thing about that game was being able to square up with enemies, and even parry their attacks. I could grab their leg as they kicked and then throw them backwards, or deflect a punch and follow up with one of my own. This is just missing in Battle Glide. From my testing, disarmed enemies won't even approach you. They'll just go searching for the nearest gun to use, even though they pose like they're about to punch on with you. As much as I love and enjoy the combat in this game, the absence of hand-to-hand -hand combat is hugely disappointing. Secondly, I wish I could web enemies up with web shots, like I can in Demigod. Spider-Man Far From Home VR handles this pretty well, that being the only thing it handles well. In that game, holding the trigger shoots a web line and tapping it shoots a web shot, which can apprehend adversaries. It's simple, easy, and so much fun. Despite my complaints, Battle Glide's combat is sensational. If there was any part of the game though that I would venture to call flawless, it'd have to be our third pillar, the fantasy replication. Battle Glide's insane gameplay scenarios put it a cut above the competition in such a way that makes it not even feel like a competition. Let's begin with this world map. The green dot is your house, where you can change the time of day. You've got day, night, rainy day, rainy night, and two different types of golden hour. This actually makes for the most diverse range of TOD options I've seen in a Spider-Man VR game. Then we've got these red dots, which are your standard wave-based missions, taking place at these construction sites. The number of waves and enemy units can be changed, which adds a degree of nuance. But now, for the big one, these dark blue dots. These? are stealth missions, and they're as cool as you think they would be. You get to lurk around this office, or this bank, silently taking out foes and zipping between perch points. It's my favourite thing to squat on a light and then web up a guy below me, hanging him from the ceiling by his feet. It's just like the stealth missions in Shattered Dimensions and the Tasm 1 game, both of which I grew up playing and loving. As far as I know, this has never been done in VR before, and here, it's absolutely amazing. The fun doesn't stop outside the confines of these missions though. The game's world has many randomly occurring petty crimes for you to stop. There's these roadside skirmishes between the mercs and the police, the latter of which you can choose not to help and they'll actually fight back, which is a really cool addition. In the same vein as this, you also have these hostage situations, which can sometimes backfire. But my favourite of all of these scenarios had to be the car chasers, where you get to swing along the skyscrapers in pursuit of a vehicle, and bring it to a stop by any range of equally fun means. Land on the roof and disarm the gunman. Check. Smash the windshield, grab the driver and pull him out? Check. Grab the whole van, throw it into a random citizen's car, destroying both and killing everyone in the process? Check. And all the vehicles have a level of destructibility too, which is so much fun to play with. Sometimes though, your super strength can get in the way. So many times I wanted to crawl into a car through the back windshield, but found that with my crawling I'd lifted the entire car into the air and messed everything up. For this reason, I think the strength could be toned back a bit to allow for these methods. I don't need to be able to lift a post fan with one hand. With all of this in mind, hopefully you can get an idea of what I mean by Battle Glide's gameplay scenarios being so great, but in case you don't, here's a needlessly complicated metaphor. Project Demigod's sandbox is huge. Lots of enemies, environments, and so on. Inside the sandbox, the sand you get to play with, the swinging in combat, is the finest, highest quality sand that Bunnings had in stock. But in the end, it's just sand. You don't have any fun toys to use with it, like a molded bucket for making castles. All you can really do is move the sand around with your hands. On the contrary, Battle Glide's sandbox is smaller, only one environment and a couple of enemy types. 
The sand inside the box is some cheaper, coarser stuff, the discounted bags at Mitre 10. But unlike in the Demigod sandbox, you have a molded bucket. You've even got a trowel and some water to help shape the sand. What I'm trying to get at is that, sure, Demigod swinging and combat are certainly better in some ways, but without fun applications to use those mechanics in, is it truly the better game? I think it comes down to what you're looking for. I've always felt that Project Demigod is an acquired taste. For a newcomer, it definitely feels janky, unpolished sometimes, and even restrictive. It's like going from your great new car to your mate's near dead Ford Falcon. Or just any Ford for that matter. But once you start driving it, you realize why it's lasted as long as it has. There's complexity and depth to be found beyond the jank. That's not to say the Battle Glide lacks depth, but I will be honest in admitting that I've replayed it less than I did Demigod. That might be due in part to some of the things I said in this video, but it exposes a dwindling level of replay value. Everything gets old after a while. I'm not still playing Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions stealth missions to this day, am I? But yet, I still love the Spider-Man VR experience, the thrill of the fight and flight. And while Battle Glide's offerings in that department are really, truly great, Demigods are just that little bit better. With all that being said though, it's a project still in development, just like Demigod. My recommendations could well be added, and some incredible things that I didn't even think to suggest as well. So, is Battle Glide the best Spider-Man VR game? It is damn close, but not right now. However, one day, in the near or far future, just maybe, it might be. Thank you.